testing the lye water strength, I showed you the density test. Let me kind of show you the old timers um, way to do it. And this is great because it goes back to what having chickens in an you know, it just reminds you that every home used to have chickens and burn wood and feather test. If your ash water is strong enough to make soap, quote, it should dissolve the feather, but not the quill. If it dissolves the quill, then it's too strong, right? So let's see what that does. It might need to be hot to do this, but I'm gonna leave that feather in there and we'll get back to it here in a minute. Yeah, uh, I think, yeah, most of those recommendations, what I, what I read, yeah, that heated lye may make a big difference here. What I'll do is when I'm taking this and boiling it down on the pot, concentrating the ash water, I'll have an, an egg with me and then I'll have a feather. And then when it's hot, I'll just dip my feather in it, swirl it around a little bit, and then come back to it. And if the feathers dissolve, then I know it's strong enough. Sounds like witchcraft to me. I know, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. People wonder what I do all day. <laughs> yes. 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 This is 1.1 grams per milliliter. Um, and I thought that this was a nice concentration. Let's see how this looks with the egg test. Smell that. Not nearly as strong in the smell. Almost. Grapes. Grapes. You smell grapes. Interesting. Okay, so they say take a fresh egg. Basically what we're doing here is another density test, a less accurate density test. And seeing if the egg floats and then how much of that egg uh, is exposed when, it, when it's floating. How much do you want exposed? It's a nickel to a quarter. That it doesn't look like a quarter to me. It looks like it's a nickel. It looks like a nickel. That's more like a nickel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm on the less less dilute side of this, which is um, frankly, if I'm making soap, I, I probably want to be on the less dilute side than the more dilute side. So you boil it down a little bit more, make it a little bit more concentrated. I, I could boil it down a little bit more. I could do that now on the stove, or I could do that after I mix it with my fat. Okay. Right. So. Um, I've already taken this um, old fat, like found in my freezer. It was in my freezer for who knows how long, just uh, beef tallow, I'm sure. And then, um, and then I, I, I know that I dethought it at least sometime around June when I was first doing this. And it got put like in the garage. Um, so anyway, this is some pretty nasty fat. Um, and I measured out a cup and a half. So if we're going to start with my successful recipe from last time, how much lye water do I need, ash water, do I need to put in? Two cups of warm fat. So we need to reduce that by 75% or by 25%. And I ended up putting in three quarters of a cup is the original recommendation to two cups fat. And I added three-eighths more, oh, with an additional quarter, so five-eighths more. It's Eleven-eighths. Okay, one and three-eighths cup to two fat. And we've got one and a half fat. Who wants to do that? It's about one. one. Yeah, one. That's nice. Nice and easy. All right, so you guys probably want to see this. You might get a, a, a fairly quick reaction. Um, when you do this, you at least want to be um, hot enough so the fat melts. Generally, it's like closer in the 130 degree range. I think we're way too hot right now. We're very hot. I was afraid we weren't even going to get it. Um, so this reaction. It's likely going to happen really quickly, and we may want to add, uh, have some extra water on standby when we do this. What are we going to see? What's going to happen quickly? You're going to, you should see um, you, the oil start to turn. You're going to notice that it's starting to turn to soap. 
um, pretty quickly. You won't see actual soap form until a lot of water evaporates off. But um, we're going to add one cup. I've got a little quarter cup here. Look at that. Whoa. Yikes. <laughs> That's hot. Oh, that oil is too hot. That's why that happened. And what's rising is just water vapor? Is the water boiling? Yeah, we basically just um, added a lot of salt to that oil. All right, that's my one cup. Now what I got to do is just stir and stir and stir like crazy. And um, let make sure that this is fully, fully mixed. And um, what will happen is that this liquid that's now this thickness is just going to start to get thicker and thicker. And that's a result of the chemical reaction. That's saponification happening. Craft soap makers are going to call this point where you can take this liquid, this soap, and pick it up with your spatula and then draw a line in it. And if that line doesn't like cave in on itself, if you can draw a line and it stays there, that's what they call trace. You're tracing the line. And that's when you know that it's ready to take out of your pot and pour into a mold. Okay? So the whole game right now is waiting for this to get to trace. And it could take hours and hours and hours. But you're not you're gonna stand there and mix it for hours? <laughs> well, you can just let it cook and then you come back and it, it, it yeah, it's one of these things and I I find this so much with any of this home setting stuff. People are like, It took you eight hours to make soap, that's crazy, you know. Who does that? <laughs> but but what it really is is like you just do it and you do something else. And you gotta if you wanna be a successful home setter, I think you gotta be a successful multitasker. And then it gets to the point where you don't have to sit and figure it out every time. You just know what to do, and it becomes habit, and it gets easy. So, uh, you know, if you're not second-guessing yourself constantly, then, uh, th then I do think that this gets pretty easy. Making liquid soap at home using uh, oil that I know its acid value and potassium hydroxide that I know its alkaline value, it's still a long process. It takes maybe four or five hours, but it's just... You know, it just becomes like a second nature thing. Um, just do it on a do it on a Sunday. <laughs> anyway, so as that cooks, it's gonna. Um, I'm gonna keep the heat on that, but I don't want it to boil. If I do let it boil, then it's gonna. Every time I've done this, I've let it boil on accident, and every time it gets this cottage cheese looking consistency. And the only way that I've found to solve that is to add more water to it, and then I gotta sit there and let it boil off, or like evaporate off over time and it just adds it adds another two hours to the whole process when I made this soap I'll, I'll admit I, I started it's in my notes I started in the evening cooking dinner I think I started making soap at the same time it was up till midnight got up the next day started again at eight just reheated it and then just fiddled with it constantly um, but uh, I do think what I got it turned out to be something pretty successful. Um, I say notes, and um, I can't stress it enough that if you're going to be playing around with this kind of stuff at all, that um, getting something like this, one of these composition books, and just writing stuff down is like, so helpful. Um, it's the only way I've been able to keep track of ratios for Nishtamal. And certainly uh, some of my success with soap. And then all these little jars and, and so stuff. If something works, you want to know what you did. If you something know? works, you got to know how to recreate it. <laughs> yeah. And that seems so obvious, but it's so easy to start and not keep track of yourself. And then um, it just gets, gets too hard to keep up with later on.